This is the how-to video on compressor troubleshooting. One of the most common problems is where the compressor causes your fuses to blow in your property or the trip switch to trip out. On smaller machines such as this one, it's caused by either an inadequate power supply caused by a poor supply to the property you're in, maybe because it's in a remote area, or because you're running from an extension lead and it's classed as voltage drop. The solution to this Firstly, is to press the reset button on your machine. In this case, it's here, but they can be located in different positions on different machines, so you need to refer to the instructions to find out where they are. Once you've pressed that reset button, the next stage on is to try plugging it straight into a socket in the property. If that solves the, the, the problem and it starts up fine, you've got your answer. Now, you may find that in warmer periods, summertime, you don't experience any problem. And this is because in winter time, the oil is thicker and it's harder to start the machine. So bear that in mind. You may have been running the machine okay, but when you come to winter time, suddenly you get a problem. So it's the user of the machine's responsibility to make sure that the power supply that they have available is suitable for the specification of the compressor. The best way of doing this is to get an electrician to view the site and actually recommend the correct type of uh, socket and power supply based upon the distance from the consumer unit to the socket that you intend to use, the specification of the compressor and obviously current building regulations as well. The next size up of compressor are typically three horsepower and they're designed to run with using a soft start uh, system, they're designed to run on a 13 amp supply. However, it's only if it's a good 13 amp supply. The same problem can occur that you've got because if you're living in a remote area or the the socket that you're plugging into is a long way from your distribution board you you'll suffer the same voltage drop that affects the smaller machines in this case the same advice applies you need to speak to an electrician to come and make suitable recommendations for your machine on larger compressors typically they automatically have to be run on a 16 amp or 32 amp supply and an electrician will have already had a look at the, uh, the site for you and solved the problems anyway. So that covers the voltage drop uh, problems that occur which blow your fuses. The next problem we're going to run through is where the reset button stays out in a popped position but the compressor is running. What's normally happened here is that the reset button has failed and it needs to be replaced. If the machine is still under warranty you've got two choices. You can speak to the CD technical department and their number will be at the end of this video. They will then arrange to send out a spare part for you and you can fit it yourself if you feel competent and I'll run through how we'll do that in just a second. Alternatively, you can then contact the, uh, the dealer that you bought the machine from and arrange for it to be picked up and taken back to our workshops to be repaired. Okay, as I mentioned before, I'm now going to show you how to change the reset button. The most important thing to do before you undo this cover is you need to turn off the main supply, so disconnect the machine from your mains. You can then take out the screws that hold the cover on, and then inside you'll see we've got a capacitor, the main supply coming in, and this is the reset switch. The next stage on is to undo this nut on the outside. I've already loosened this one in preparation, remove the nut, then push the switch inside, and then two spade fittings. You disconnect those. You don't need to make a note which way they go on because it doesn't matter. Either way, it doesn't, it doesn't have any effect on it. Then all you need to do is get a new switch, reconnect, and obviously it's the reverse order of what I've done already. Push this in like so, back out again. That's just the reset switch collar. We'll put, let's put that back on there. And then replace the nut. Tighten the nut with a spanner. Refit your cover with all its screws. And when you, all of that is done, you can then turn the machine back on again and test it and see that it works correctly. 
The next thing we're going to cover is air escaping from under the pressure switch of the compressor. Okay, so the way we test the pressure switch, it can be one of two things that are causing the problem. It could be the switch itself, or it could be this valve. This is called a non-return valve. Um, the simple way to do it is to fill the tank full of, of air, so until the actual compressor stops itself, and then, using a spanner, loosen off this nut here, and back it off slowly. And if you find the air starts to escape from there, stop and retighten it, because it's proven that it's this valve which is at fault. So I'll tighten that back up now, and the next thing we have to do is undo this end cap. So the thing to do, empty the tank full of air now so it's all gone. So, it's, so you empty all the air out and then unscrew this. And behind here, there is a spring and a rubber washer. Sometimes there could be a little bit of swarf that's come from inside the tank. And there we are. You can see there, one spring and one rubber washer. And what happens is the spring puts pressure on the washer and that seats against a flange. And if you get dirt in here, that could stop that from seating properly and air could be escaping past it. So if you find anything there, clean it off. It could be split or it could be that the spring is broken, in which case you need to replace both components or it could have just become weak on the spring. So. Once they've been done, you just put it back together again, like so, and tighten it back up again, and then retest the compressor. So that's if the valve has gone wrong. But if there's nothing wrong with the valve, and no air escaped from here, it's down to the pressure switch. And if it's the pressure switch, what you need to do then is replace it. That's more involved. That would involve, um, it's, it's actually seated in with a thread lock and that would need to be warmed with a, with a, uh, a, a blowtorch to allow you to get a hot air gun to soften that, that uh, thread lock so you can unscrew it. And most people tend then to send it back to a service centre or to us at Sealy's for us to, to work on for them. So that would involve replacing that. And that covers the leaking from the pressure switch. The other thing which can happen with the pressure switch as well is that if you fill the machine full of air and you have it running and it doesn't stop itself, it just keeps on running until this safety valve blows, then you need to replace the pressure switch. That's at fault because it should, it should stop the air automatically. So that's another problem that can happen with the pressure switch. Okay, if you've been using your compressor for some time and then suddenly you find it blows the switch and you're on the same electrical supply that you're normally using, a common problem is where people have forgotten to turn the machine off correctly the last time they use it. Um, when you turn your compressor off, you should be using this red switch on top of the pressure switch. So the idea is that's on and off. And what the reason for that is because when you turn it off, it releases uh, through a valve, it releases pressure that's in the pipework. So if you don't do that, when you go to restart it next time, what will happen is a pressure against it and it can cause the fuse to blow in your plug or on your trip or fuse board. So the way to overcome this after you've had this problem is to release the pressure by undoing this nut again on the non-return valve, letting any air out of the pipe work, then re-tighten it, then obviously connect the machine up to the mains again, turn it on as you should do, and let it run. Wait a little while, and then if you turn the machine off by pressing this down, you should hear a pshhh, and the idea of that is you've tested the pressure switch because it should, to make sure the valve is working correctly. So if you get that push of, of, of escaping air when you do that, it's just a one-off thing. It's not a long hiss, it's just a push. That's working correctly. If it doesn't do it, yet again, you need to replace the pressure switch. If you've owned your compressor for some time and you suddenly notice that 
it's running out of air too quickly. A common problem is condensation build up in the tank. Now, we always recommend that you empty the tank of condensation, or condensate as it's known, um, on a daily basis. Um, this builds up naturally inside all, all compressors, and what it's doing is rusting the interior of the tank, which is not good, but also, if it's left and, and not touched at all, slowly that water level will build up inside and you're reducing the capacity of the tank. The way to overcome this, is if we lean the compressor over, there's a tap underneath. And as I say, you should be doing this every day or at least once a week. And you open the valve. This one's actually like a little mini tap, but other ones are little screws, little brass screw, screw nut, which you undo. And you then have water that will dribble out. And you do this with the tank almost empty. So you've emptied most of the air out. And what will help, the little bit of air that's left in there then will help to push out the water. Now, if you haven't been doing this, and when you open the tap, nothing happens, what you need to do then is to get a fine screwdriver, open the tap up, and then push the screwdriver up inside. Because what's probably happening is there's a crust of rust covering the hole. And if you break through it, be prepared, because literally sometimes you can get five or six litres of water can come out. So be prepared with a container underneath to catch it all. So the simple way of overcoming this is just remember, as, as I say, ideally daily or at least once a week, if you're using it regularly, empty that condensation out. Okay, if you've got a V-twin model, such as this, where the cylinders are shaped in a V, and you're finding that it's struggling to fill the tank, it's taking a long time, an easy way to test it is to remove your air filters and place your hands with it running place your hands over the air intakes and if you find there's more suction on one side than the other it means that the gaskets have gone on one side of your, of your head and uh, they need to be replaced and that will involve obviously taking it back to one of our service centers and you'd normally do that by going back to your main dealer where you purchased it from or by contacting our technical department whose telephone number is at the end of this video. The next thing I'd like to talk about is three-phase compressors. Um, if you find that your compressor is starting to use too much oil or there's oil leaking from the dipstick, this is commonly caused by it rotating in the wrong direction. If, if you look at the pulleys that the belt runs around, they should have an arrow on them or sometimes there's, a, there's an arrow on the uh, protective cage that goes around the pulleys. If it's going the wrong way, so the direction is the opposite of the arrow, then it's been wired incorrectly. So it's actually going in reverse, and that's what causes the oil to be used and oil to come out of the dipstick. What you need to do in these situations is to get a, an electrician to have a look at it for you and to correct the problem, and your problem will be solved. Obviously you need to bear in mind though, once you've all finished, check your oil level and refill as necessary. Another possible problem with three-phase compressors is if you get a pshht, pshht sound as the compressor's running. It keeps on making a, a pshht of escaping air as it runs. That's a sure sign of a leaking head gasket, in which case the machine then needs to be returned, as before, back to one of our service centres or to here at Sealy headquarters. Yet again, you either speak to your main dealer to make arrangements for that, or you can speak to our technical department whose telephone number's at the, the end of this video. The next thing I'd like to run through with you is uh, problems with screw compressors. Uh, a common problem with, with these is that uh, people find that they fail to start. And the first thing you need to do is check the fuses because they can go at any time. If they're okay, check the fuse holders. And if they need to be replaced, you need to get a qualified electrician to do that for you. Another problem can be where people have been in touch with us saying that their oil level is too low. Now this is very similar to having a car or, or any motor vehicle. When the machine is running, the oil level will appear to be low if you look in the sight glass. This is because the oil is distributed throughout the compressor. You need to wait a good half hour before checking that oil level with the machine turned off so that the oil has time to then drain back down and will show correctly in the sight glass. If then you find that it's low, top it up. Thanks for watching this video. Look out for other how-to videos and other product videos which you can find on our website 
and also on YouTube.